Okay. How do I look? Um, Got any toothpaste on my face? No, you're fine. Good. No, I was brushing my teeth right before I walked in. Good evening, and welcome to another edition of the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. I'm your host, Michael McAuliffe, and with me is my co-host, Perry Haichu. We are. We have an, uh, an election night uh, special coverage tonight. We are covering races around the country and here in Nevada. We are at the Shango Las Vegas facility on Boulder Highway, and we are taking a look at the results as they are starting to come in, and we want to talk about them a little bit. Uh, coming from the East Coast, Perry, I see that, um, that both Maine and Massachusetts are in favor of legalization right now. We have 23.6% of the vote in Maine, and we're leading uh, 52 to 48, and Massachusetts is leading 53 to, to uh, 47 with 40.6 percent reporting. Not so surprised about Maine, pretty surprised about Massachusetts. We're always happy to have the potential wins, but in the, on the medical side, mm -hmm. what really impressed me the most is we're winning in all four of the medical states in Arkansas, Florida, Montana, and North Dakota. Actually, I think Florida has actually been called. Uh, yes, have, it has. Yes. So that's fantastic. We won Florida, but Arkansas is 51 percent in favor with 22 percent of the vote coming in. I thought that was just a fantastic uh, fantastic s statistic out of what is considered to be and, a Bible Belt state. And, and for me, the big surprise of this list here is North Dakota uh, with 43.8 percent of the vote re uh, reporting that they're at 61.4 percent to 39 percent. And so in North Dakota, which I would think is a very conservative, deeply red state, yes. Trump tonight, uh, but they're, they're voting for uh, Sanity, a medical marijuana program. So they will become the second medical state of the night if they pass this and the 27th state in the union to have medical marijuana laws. Maybe a little bit of that libertarian streak coming out in those closet voters. We never know and I uh, guess we'll find out in a couple hours as the as the uh, polls continue to yeah, trickle in. Nevada, I, unfortunately, we, not well, reporting we, at this we don't time. Have, we don't Neither have results. California. Unfortunately, we don't have news. Not unfortunately, it's bad news. Uh, California, we don't have yet. Uh, uh, we see in Montana, which actually had a medical marijuana program several years ago that the voters approved and then the state legislature decided they didn't like that so they stripped out most of it mm -hmm. and took the took the medical marijuana yeah. rights away I remember from that. dispensary owners from patients and so they uh, these uh, activists went out in Montana and got this back on the ballot again this year and currently with just starting to report in just a few precincts uh, they're 53.8 percent in favor oh, with point of one percent reporting percent <laughs> that's not that's not a big sample size but we're going to see this stuff uh, reporting up uh, very quickly uh, through the evening and we're doing something of, a, of an experiment here tonight doing a, uh, a location shoot uh, and trying to look at the history that's being made um, I have I have read and I have seen so much about what's going on this election year this single day of November 8th 2016 may be the most important day in the history of cannabis reform uh, oh, with absolutely being no on doubt. so many states uh, with we could at the end of this uh, night have uh, a quarter of the state, a quarter of the population of the United States under legalized cannabis laws. So uh, it's it's just going to be really exciting, and we'll talk to a few other people while we're here, including a special surprise guest. And uh, so, how, what do you see happening here in general? I couldn't have said it better myself. You covered all the bases. Um, I'm just kind of anxiously anticipating what's going to happen with question two still. It seems like everything is trending our way for the most part, except in Arizona, but really... And we know California is going to, is almost certainly going oh, to Oh, yeah, pass. I mean, the last poll I saw, I think, was near 70% approval, mm -hmm. somewhere in the high 60s, so it would, it would be... A catastrophe if that were to if that were not to so happen. So hopefully Nevadans will realize that uh, it makes economic sense to uh, to pass this uh, this particular measure, and we'll see where it goes. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be back to you in a bit. And welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. We're here with our uh, guest tonight, uh, Shane McKee from Shango, Las Vegas, and we're here to talk about uh, what you guys are doing in Nevada. You know, man, we're happy to be here. It's a new market. It was an underserved market. They needed medical. We're now looking at having rec. Mm -hmm. um, we're really excited to have not only been able to serve the patients here, but see other folks in the community to have an opportunity to legally possess and purchase cannabis and uh, not feel like they're doing something wrong or not risk uh, dealing with the wrong people. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And we can see that, that uh, this is turning out to be one of the defining nights uh, in the whole cannabis reform movement, in the history of the movement, because we see that uh, uh, on four states that we have medical, it has been approved in, in three out of those four, Arkansas, Florida, North Dakota, and it's leading in Montana. And for rec, uh, we've got California. It looks like Maine is going to pass it. Uh, Massachusetts, we're ahead here in Nevada. It's only Arizona's that's, uh, that's crashing the party. But um, aside from that, I'd say we've got a pretty damn good night. This is the sign of the times. It's been an amazing night. I mean, cannabis has hit critical mass, and uh, desensitization has happened. Uh, the truth is no longer hidden. Uh, the majority of Americans are cognizant of what cannabis is and what it isn't. Uh, the votes are proving it tonight. I mean, epic night. I mean, that, to hit this many is just, uh, it's been amazing. I had, I didn't anticipate it, to be honest with you, and I tend to be pretty optimistic. It's a good batting average, that's for sure. Let me ask, uh, uh, you guys have just come down into the Nevada market, but tell us a little bit about uh, how Shango started. Uh, we started, we actually did start the Shango brand here in cannabis, but uh, I've been cultivating in Oregon since 1997. Brandon's been in California since 1996. Uh, before that, we both sold picks and, picks and shovels, if you will, fertilizers and lighting and things. So through construction, uh, selling supplies and being growers and providers of medical, between the two of us, you know, we're 50 years. Um, we uh, currently have 15 recreational licenses in the state of Oregon, five retails, 10 cultivation and manufacturing sites. It's a little different than down here where we can have one larger facility here. Unfortunately, Oregon did 10,000 square foot canopy limits, so we're kind of scattered all over the city up there, but uh, excited nonetheless. It's been a, a decent rollout in Oregon. I think actually Nevada's done a wonderful job down here. I have to commend them. I mean, there's always tweaks and changes that can be made, but overall Nevada's really set a bar of how to get something in place, make it happen, and make it operational. Oregon's two years later, it's kind of having some struggles with operations and implementation, transition from medical to rec. I anticipate that the transition here will go smoothly. You know, other markets take two years and are still having a mess of a problem. They have a pretty robust regulatory system here. They've proven track record that they want to get it going and make it work. So we hope for an early start, big time. We hope that we come out of the legislative session and people realize that uh, it's legal already and that people are going to want to possess it and want to have it. We don't want to drive them to the black market. We're already labbing product here. We already have surveillance and security. So let's get them through the doors here. Give them a safe place and uh, let the regulators take their time and, and come up with a program that's going to work for everybody but serve the community at the same time. So let me ask, Shango has developed now a reputation uh, for being a regional player in the, in the market. And I would imagine you have uh, national goals ahead of you. Um, yes, we have legalization on the ballot right now, but the medical market is still reasonably small. What was it that made Shango decide that this was a good time to come into Nevada? Uh, it was a good opportunity for the brand. We knew that overall Nevada would be one of the states that would approve recreational. We didn't know if it was going to be <clears throat> excuse me, 16, 18, 20 at the worst. We'd assumed 16 when we came into this. We didn't look at it as uh, somewhere like Oregon or California where they were going to sit for 20 years and do nothing with the program and let somebody grow six plants. They'd kind of proven that. Uh, early on in the application process that they meant business um, about allowing biz big businesses to come in here and operate. Um, so I think we anticipated this happening, what we hope to happen here in a few minutes. Yes, absolutely. What do you think that um, you're bringing to Nevada? Uh, since it's a new market, there's not really a lot of patient loyalty to any of these places. How are you going to attract people to the Shango brand and, and make them stick with you in the long term? You know, I'm a big advocate for patients. Uh, any market we operate in, I'll always do everything I can to advocate for no taxes for patients, for higher milligram doses as needed for patients. Uh, uh, we'll always look to protect them. I think that uh, I, I try to do the very best I can at creating medicines that are going to work. Uh, we're now working on formulating some different products for special ailments here. We've brought on two PhDs and two masters in science recently. So our staff uh, has really increased on our research and development side. Um, I think we're going to shine with customer service. We're going to be one of the best at, at uh, the products that we make quality-wise, and, and our staff will continue to thrive every day to be the best at customer service to the, their ability. And one of the things that I saw up in Portland when I went there was that you're extracting and then recombining terpenes into your vape products for 
essentially uh, an unlimited supply of, uh, of flavors for patients. Uh, are you finding that the, the patients are reacting to that? What, what do you think your big sellers are? We are, are. Flour, and, and to me it's oil? not really about flavors. We all love good flavors, but um, you know, if, if you take an Indica and a Sativa and you say one of them is supposed to make you tired and one of them is supposed to make you want to ride your bike or, or be creative, right? If you take that and make a pure distillate out of that and you're left with THC, it doesn't matter if it came from a car tire or a cannabis plant. It's the compound is THC, right? Right. So answer yourself then what makes the sativa and an indica? It's not the difference, there's no difference in the THC, it's one and the same. So terpenes are, you know, through the analgesic effects, uh, through effects that they have on their own, um, from psychoactive to healing to anti inflammatory to uh, for your digestive system. So the terpenes, yes, the flavors are cool and, and the market seems to enjoy those, but uh, beyond the flavor, one of the things that when I said we're doing R&D is creating specific products for specific ailments right now and we're really using terpene in that technology so we anticipate mixing some terpenes up and coming out with some products that are going to have some great effects for the patients. So how do you see the, presuming that uh, Nevada does pass uh, legalization tonight, um, how do you see this affecting Shango in a larger scale? Is, are you planning on making Nevada, Las Vegas a, a showpiece because we get so many tourists or is that how you're hoping to get the brand and uh, known in a more national market? It will be big for the brand. It's going to be a huge market. We've got 43 million visitors a year here. Uh, Vegas is known as a playground. Um, so it, it will really put the brand on the map with other people from all over the world that are coming here. Um, but it's also, uh, Brandon, my partner, has worked here for a lot of years. This is really, though he lives in Orange County part-time, this is his home as well. Uh, I enjoy it here. Um, we look forward to participating in this market for a long time and, and hope to benefit the market and bring good things to the market. Outstanding. Well, Shane, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you on the show. Thank you, Michael. And we're all going to keep our fingers crossed and look for the next update of, of the results. Any minute. Let's celebrate. You do bet. Thank you. And welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Um, your host, Michael McAuliffe, here with our guest this evening, uh, Jennifer Solis, the president of Weekend and the dispensary manager here at Shango Las Vegas. Welcome to the show, Jen. You've been on it so many times. I was going to say it. It seems like family. Yeah, it really is. And, and, you know, that's one of the things that I do like about this movement, especially in a smaller state like Nevada, is that it does become like family. I mean, we've been working together on this issue for going on eight years now. Eight years. And, and there are so many people who have been in it uh, for uh, the long term. Um, What's it like to be right here on the cusp of legalization? We're leading in, in the polls and... Well, I was going to say, I always like to be the front runner and I think that Nevada is uh, the front runner for legalization in Nevada, I mean in the, in the United States, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, I think that this is historic and I think that that's why we're all hanging out here after hours just so that we can see what the polls are going to say uh, at the end of the night. And, and at the end of the night, whether we have legalization or not, we can is still going to be around as an organization and continuing to do work. Um, I know that in the past few months, we can has expanded not only from Las Vegas, but into Pahrump and up to uh, uh, up Reno. north, up into Reno yep. area. And there's a, another radio show that's up there. Uh, and so it looks like we're we're on a roll here and if we get legalization to pass tonight weekend's role is not finished in working for medical patients but instead actually, we're opening up to a whole new market no actually our role is not diminished and uh, as a matter of fact we have well, we we're in the constitution as our medical program so that's not going to end for nevada mm -hmm. not as not only is our medical program not going to end i'm looking to extend the benefits that um, medical patients have the ability to grow we don't want that sunset clause to happen we want to make sure that uh, we're able to grow well into as long as we feel like yes exactly yes. I was gonna say well into the next century yeah definitely so anyway it's uh, you know it, it's an exciting time to be part of this movement and to see the work that we've been trying to accomplish for so many years 
finally maybe just here a few minutes away you know. I was gonna say you know the thing is is that we've been working on this movement for a long time to see this to come to fruition is really just going to be a big load off our shoulders no more rests for cannabis at least you know on a personal level which is amazing um, you know as personal rights go um, this will be really liberating for a lot of people um, we are not you know our minorities will be more safe when they go out on the streets from arrest and uh, detainment uh, and so I, I don't really see any negative aspects to it uh, you know some of our commercials and naysayers were talking about children and and how it how it uh, doubled the the ER trips doubled well it doubled from five to ten folks yeah for the state of Colorado so um, in in the realization I think that I think that it's a good thing for Nevada it's a good thing for our economy and it's a good thing for our prison system it'll free up those it'll free up those cells and and those, that court those time and those resources. judge and the public resources to focus on crimes that really matter outstanding so we're gonna be we're gonna be busy in the next legislative session whatever happens tonight we're going to be busy working in the next session and so i know we're going to see you up there i'm going to let you get back to work thanks All right. for being on the show thank you so much guys mm -hmm. And welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. I'm here with Dave Thomas, a political consultant here in Las Vegas, as well as one of the owners of Shango Las Vegas. And Dave, I've I've got to ask you. We we just heard um, we just heard the question two got passed. What do you what are you thinking? Excited. Um, I think everybody's been involved in working over the last many years. Um, and in your case, Michael, meant a lot more years than uh, people like myself, but people have been in, in the last two to three years to try to see this day come forward and see recreational marijuana pass in the state of Nevada. It's very satisfying. Uh, well, and I would think you had you had something of a longer hand even than your uh, uh, involvement with this facility because you were a campaign manager to Tick Sagerblum at one point, weren't you? Yes, I was. Uh, Tick Sagerblum's campaign rolled in 2012. And, and yeah. Tick is re re regarded yeah. as the father of marijuana in, in yeah. Nevada. Yeah, and so I, I have to tell you, when, it, when I was doing Tick's campaign in 2012, he talked about coming up with the legislation to um, uh, implement the people's vote uh, to support re uh, medical marijuana use. And um, I thought about that, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. Uh, I never dreamt when we were using that as a campaign issue that I would be involved in ownership. I just thought that that was intriguing to see whether he could get that passed. But he was ardent in uh, trying to get that established as a candidate mm -hmm. in 2012. And it's interesting that he was as successful as he was, and he built a wonderful coalition with um, now uh, Lieutenant Governor Mark Hutchison and yes. others to get that in place. And so that was a terrific victory. And I'm sure for Tick, this is a r really exciting moment because we've taken it to the next level and we're now going to be able to have recreational use. So in, in getting involved with a company like this, a medical marijuana company, um, had had to have a lot of hair-raising moments for you because the program did not roll out as quickly as people thought it would in this state. And people coming from other states were tending to bring their own a lot anyway. Um, how do you how do you think things changing now that we have question two passed and how quickly do you expect change to occur? Hopefully pretty quickly. I understand that the uh, Nevada legislature, the, they're projecting the assembly and the Senate are going to both be controlled by Democrats now. Mm -hmm. And I think the Democrats are more receptive to moving forward um, quickly on um, legalizing recreational use of marijuana. So I think there's a chance that we could parallel what they did in Oregon and have some sort of uh, temporary... Health division oversight uh, until the, the other regulations get, right. and, get passed. Right, and yeah, in essence a temporary program that allows you to get started sooner before they complete all the regulations that they need. Um, that would be helpful. Um, uh, people who have been involved in this business, and I feel very comfortable to speak for pretty much all the owners of dispensaries throughout Clark County, we've all struggled tremendously to make the businesses succeed, and it's been a financial drain on every one of us because of uh, the fact that we've had so few medical marijuana cards mm -hmm. and we have to work with that we've had to fight very hard uh, to reach a level of breaking even in this business. 
the owners have done as a collective group over the last year is they've invested lots of their own money to keep these businesses afloat. So the people who thought that uh, getting these licenses were immediately a, a winning lottery ticket and a path to riches uh, <laughs> misguided. No, exactly. Very much misguided. I, I mean, we have to do a lot of work um, to uh, get this, our facility uh, to the level that it is now and a lot of individual time and money that owners had to put in. They had invested their heart and soul into this place for a couple of years to make it uh, go forward and, and reach this point. So it's very satisfying. Matter of fact, your your sister, I mean, we've got, uh, I think it's, what, 900 lights out there. She pretty much put all of those together herself. Mm -hmm. So that was a lot of um, hard work and dedication. And when she came through the two months of just focusing, working on lights, that was, what, 16 months before this day has come yeah. about. So it's been that long. And I just, I applaud all of the people that we've got in our ownership group, but also um, with all of the, the marijuana, um, marijuana facilities throughout the state for the effort that all the owners have done to keep them going forward and, and keep them alive and, and reaching out to their patients and investing the money they need to to keep their doors open. Um, it's been a great challenge and uh, hopefully now we'll do a lot of good things for the community. We'll have the resources to do more for the community as well as have some really successful businesses give provide people a product that is has a lot of value uh, and uh, that will have high quality product and uh, people can that when they go to one of these facilities they're going to walk away with something that's going to be beneficial for them. And not beneficial yes in, in a health health sense but also in the fact that uh, regulations are so strict in medical marijuana facilities that the product that is sold here is actually tested more than most food in America. So is safer than most anything you're going to buy over the right, counter. Right. Well, we double test a, a lot of things. Everything that goes through edibles, in essence, goes through a double testing process of, of the concentrate of the marijuana. We, we have to test the original flower, and then we've got to test it when we put it in as uh, the oil. Mm -hmm. So um, that's not something you don't have with any food products in this country is a double testing. Um, and it's very rigid, and uh, a lot of things really um, could objectively pass and still be used and sold to the public are not used or sold to the public because we have such a tough standard. So, you know, you sound like you've picked up a lot of knowledge in this industry in, in the past couple of years that we've been talking about this. Um, did you think when you were taking the bar exam that one day you'd own a, essentially a marijuana bar? No. Uh, uh, where my life has led me to this point in time, I never envisioned this. This is like... Uh, somebody decided to blindfold me and shove me down a path. Um, I'm excited with what we're doing now and the direction uh, going forward, um, but I honestly uh, was somewhat reluctant initially to get involved because I thought it was beyond my understanding. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I wasn't confident that we would be successful. Um, and I didn't have the initial vision, but I got transformed over the process. Sometimes people who start out um, kind of unaware of where something can go can get, just by continuing to be persistent and staying in the course and being involved, can all of a sudden elevate themselves where they learn a lot and they develop uh, an appreciation for it and they, they also get a drive and a commitment to make it succeed and all of a sudden you go, the, you know, the, the, but, the switch gets turned on and you flip and you become somebody different than what you were originally. And I think that's what's happened with me. But, you know, we've had so many obstacles with our group that also toughened me up mm -hmm. and also given, got me more motivation and drive to make this thing succeed. And um, I really have to say it's the motivation and drive of the majority ownership group on Shango that I give them a lot of credit. We've had a lot of internal strife any at new, times. Any new venture does. Right. But we've had an incredible unity 
to go and work together as a group and we have celebrated at great events together with a lot of love and affection for one another but that doesn't mean uh, we get together in a boardroom with one another we aren't going to have another fight on some issue well any any family fights yeah, that's right any so as, as a political consultant and and uh, just before you as we were coming on you said we've got a blue wave happening here in Nevada yeah. do you think that we're going to be able to put pressure on our uh, newly elected and, and returning uh, congressional and senatorial members to finally change rule 280e to change the the uh, the the IRS rule that blocks medical marijuana facilities from taking deductions and making them not nearly as competitive as I'm the very state. hopeful in that regard uh, that we've got the right people in Washington DC will work with us and I'm excited about the people that we have there many of whom are individuals that I personally supported and I know I maxed out personally in Ruben Kiwin's campaign and I'm mm -hmm. so thrilled to see Ruben win tonight and Ruben is like a very dear friend and he's made a strong commitment to helping out the industry and um, I look forward to working with Ruben and I expect very positive things from him as well as the other members of the delegation we've heard positive statements from um, obviously Dina Titus has been a strong supporter, a supporter sure. we've heard good statements from Jackie Rosen absolutely we have and it's thrilling just to win that seat only the second time since its creation in 2000 right and with someone that a lot of people didn't have high expectations mm -hmm. for. Of course, people thought Donald Trump had no chance to be elected president of the United States, and he might do it tonight. Mm, it's scary. Yeah, it's, it's scary. scary. Yeah. So, but there's there's more to come. So, thanks so much for yeah. taking the time to talk. Thank to you, me, Mike. Dave, and we'll be right back. Okay. Uh, I had an operation too. It's a, so you we're, we're, well, no, I had a quad bypass earlier oh, this year. Yeah. That's a good chest. That's easy. Yeah. It's easy, huh? Get one in your ass. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. And I hope not to. <laughs> Joe Rogan once cursed somebody, I hope you get ass cancer. And I, I was on his show when he did it, and I thought to myself, man, that is so cold to see that. <laughs> and then, when, especially when I got it, man, whoa. Whoa. Well. But, you know, the good news yeah. is the new plumbing is so handy and easy and... And you don't have any problems with the old, what you used to have, I used to have, you know, mm -hmm. except I have to make sure there's a bathroom near handy, you know. Yes, sir. But other than that, but I'm, I'm good to go. Yeah, no more ice cream trucks for you, then. <laughs> you, you need to stay a little close. Now it's RVs. So anyway, welcome back to the, to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. With us tonight is our very special guest. Uh, uh, cannabis legend Tommy Chung who has been uh, I, I remember you from playing in junior high school playing Sister Mary Elephant and yes. Dave's not here and and uh, a whole generation has grown up with you um, what's it like to be an icon it's hard to really judge it because you're inside it you know what I'm saying it's like being inside a diving suit you know, uh, you can look around and, and see everything going on. I'm very blessed. You know, it's, I, I, I feel very blessed. I love the look people get on their face when they see me. And that's why when people want pictures, you know, I, I'm very happy to oblige. You know, because I know there's so much love there, you know. And, and it seems that uh, aside from the occasional federal prosecutor, you are almost universally greeted with love and respect and, and held in higher regard than any of the politicians running tonight uh, for any office in the world. I'll tell you how powerful we are. We were in New York, Cheech and I were in New York, and we were doing the rounds of the Fox Network, mm -hmm. and we were on, I think it was uh, Bill O'Reilly or, or Sean Hannity. Sean Hannity is scared to death of us. He tiptoed around us like we were, you know, some kind of untouchable. First thing he said was, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I had all your stuff. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly attacked me, which was okay because the only attack, you know what the only attack was? He said, well, you're still wearing T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and what I said to him, I said, well, Bill, have you ever smoked pot? He said, I've never smoked pot. i never smoked pot. I said, well, that's your problem. I says, you should smoke pot. Then you wouldn't be so angry. And then he, then he did the perfect thing. Angry? I'm not angry. <laughs> it was perfect. But they cut it out. Well, yeah, of course. But I'll, they, tell you how powerful shows we are. I'll tell you how powerful we are. We shoot Ann Coulter 
away. She couldn't come near us. Really? She because that we Cheech and Chong, we were. It was like we held a cross up to the devil. You know, she just she just melted away. She just wouldn't come near us. Well, that would be nice. Hopefully, she will never come back. I, you know, it's just well, see, she's a scary see, person. My attitude to all those people, including Donald Trump, mm -hmm. is that they're just unevolved. That's all. That's all. We're all evolving at a different rate, and those people, they're just unevolved. Whenever I meet somebody like that and uh, and am intimidated by them or thinking that you know they're all high and mighty and full of themselves, I just try to imagine them like every other human sitting on a, on the toilet with diarrhea and we're all the same, you know. And and so that takes a, away any sense of awe yeah. that I have of them. Um, you know, I I met um, Jack Herrer uh, a yeah. few years back before he passed, and he had said that um, uh, when looking at the reform movement that we have, that you know, Mike, 40 years ago, my partner said, you know, Jack, we're we're this close from passing marijuana and legalization, and you know, this at the end of his life, he was in a wheelchair and he had strokes, and and he's like, Mike, you know, here we are, we're this close away from passing marijuana legalization. Did you think that? you would be a marijuana entrepreneur in your lifetime, the, w the way that we've seen things going in the war on drugs in the last four no, years? No, not even close. Not even close. Uh, I'd make a lousy dealer because I, I, I've never really, I'd give it away, you yeah. know. <laughs> I, I still do. I, I give pot away all the time. And know? in the early days of the medical marijuana program in Nevada, that's exactly what we activists had to do yeah. to stay legal, was we would have to share with <clears throat> other patients. And uh, the, yeah, the right, law enforcement could not understand how somebody would do that sort of thing to help another human being. Yeah. And, you know, they, they haven't smoked pot. No, you know? so Perry, well, they're they're unevolved. And une you well, see, they're I'll agree with you on that to a degree. Perry, you, you would want to ask a question. Thanks, Mike. Um, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to hang out with us on this very special day in America. Um, as a younger millennial generational mm. type, uh, we also were very impacted by your work over the course of my lifetime. I've grown up watching your movies. I've seen your stand-up comedy. And I very much enjoyed it, by the way. It was very close to, uh, at the Palms. I saw your show with Cheech oh. a couple of years ago. You guys were great. And um, my question to you is, what motivated you to transition from showbiz into activism? And another question to follow up after that. Sorry. Well, I uh, had no choice, really. They put me in jail. And it was, as, it was as simple as that. Yeah, they put me in jail for a bomb. Mm -hmm. And so when I got out, everybody wanted to hear what I had to say. You know? So you were thrust into it. Yeah, basically thrust into it. And then when I started talking about it, because I'm the kind of guy, uh, I don't do my humor, I don't write it. I don't sit at home and write uh, or, or copy or anything else. I, I live in the moment. You know, that's one thing Pot has really uh, taught me. I, I just live in the moment. And so what are, whatever I'm doing at the time is the most important thing in my world. No you know, even, even like just sitting out beside the pool in my house. To me, it, it's the most important thing in the world. I don't trip. What they call today mindfulness. Yeah, I, I don't trip. I don't worry about the future or the past. I live right totally in, in, in the present. And I had to do that, especially when I got sick, because that was, that was the only way I'd get through it. And then, it, then when I got on the drugs in, in the hospital, I was curious. I said, oh, good, I've never had morphine before you know and I've always wanted to find out what it was right you know? there you go in fact Lenny Bruce the guy that sold Lenny the drugs or that found final the, dose. Yeah, the final dose was our road manager for a while oh, Jesus. Uh, and he, he didn't mean to I mean it was just Lenny himself you know he just just like Michael Jackson he just sure. went one you, just took it too far one one trick over the line yeah. you know and so so I, do, I asked Tony, I said, Tony, what's, what's, it like? what's, what's heroin like? And Tony didn't say a word, just reached in his pocket and handed me a packet of heroin. <laughs> he says, find out. Give it a try, yeah. And well, that is the heart of the gateway theory. Well, what I did, I, I, held, I took that heroin package and I looked at it, then I hid it in my closet. Every once in a while, I'd take it out and look at it. 
And then I finally took it and flushed it down the toilet. I had no urge whatsoever to become a junkie with a needle in my arm in the ghetto, in the gutter, you know, none. So whatever that magic was. So when I got sick, when I got the operation, they, they hooked me up to uh, morphine, which is basically the same thing. Yeah. And so I said, oh, good, I'm going to find out what this <laughs> is all about. Well, what it did, it made me funny. It made me very funny. I was sharp. My mind was sharp. I came out of, I, when, I, when I came out of the, the anesthesia, you know, I, I cleared my head, and I, the nurses are pushing me down the hallway. And I looked up, and I saw one, what I thought was a nurse. It was my daughter. And, and I, said, I said, oh, my God, you look exactly like my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they looked at me like, are you okay? This guy's on one. Uh, and then I started one. cracking jokes about the doctor. I mean, they're like really good jokes. And, and then it started to wear off. And then I started getting so miserable. And there's a little button there, you know, that I was hooked up to the yeah. spinal thing. And I had a button to push. I started pushing that button. And then I started pushing the button for no reason other than to, to, get, yeah. to keep that thing. And you know what I found out about heroin and, and all that? After the first shot, then it takes a little more to just to be normal. Right, not to and get. then a little more just to be normal and not to hurt so much. It just, it, it was insidious. And so as soon as I could get off it, I got off it. But that, that's also one of the, the points that people who don't understand medical marijuana and the therapeutic use of this plant, they, they figure, oh, you, you just want to smoke it. Oh, you're saying you're sick. You just want to get high. You just want to get high. And patient after patient after patient I've talked to over the years has said, no, I'm just trying to get normal. I'm just trying to get to a little level of functionality. And uh, Well, you know what I found out is that what marijuana does, why, why it's so great, it gives you an appetite. Mm -hmm. And not just an appetite for food, but an appetite for life. Huh. The worst thing about being miserable, well, it's just like the, the soldiers with the uh, post-traumatic uh, mm -hmm. uh, syndrome, yeah. they kill themselves. 22 a day. Yeah, because they get so down and, and so low that the only cure to them is to put themselves out of their misery. And especially after so many of them have been put through opioid therapy by our own government, and now we're finding that the pot gateway, yeah, it is a gateway out of opium ad addiction. And unfortunately, the government, and I still have these hopes in the final few days that Barack Obama will pull a rescheduling and screw you out the door. Did you hear what he said about that? Uh, did you, he said that if... Uh, Obama released a statement the other day that said if all five of those states go recreationally legal that it will almost certainly force the hand of the federal government because the federal prohibition will become uh, like almost like a null and void point. At, you know, when you have so many Americans living under recreational legalization, it doesn't seem logical for the federal government to have this policy in place anymore. What that really means on a practical level is yet to be seen, and, but and we're, we're going to have to see how this... We're ahead in eight out of the nine states that are on the ballot uh, at this point. Uh, and Arizona is the only one it looks like legalization is going down to defeat. But everywhere else, the numbers Arizona? are, yeah. Uh, Arizona was down by, a, by about 11 points. Well, that's uh, because the Spanish, I guess, are not voting for it to be legal. And that's a, that's a concern that we have here in Nevada with our large Latino population yeah. as well. Because, because they, they got that uh, fear thing because they've been... Uh, persecuted so much. Persecuted, for, it, persecuted for it already. And, the, you know, yeah, they want the kids, don't, don't you don't do that marijuana. So, especially when it was the old Latinos that used it for medicine, mm -hmm. you know, for their arthritis and everything else. I, I had a, a patient bring in to me at one time um, a, a jar filled with alcohol, mesquite sprigs, and, and some marijuana buds. And, and he has said that uh, his abuela, his grandmother, mm -hmm. had given it to him. And they, they used this as a common... Uh, pain medication, yeah. a, a liniment in, in Mexico. For, for their, their arthritis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what uh, Cheech's uh, uh, grandmother. So how, how does it feel having smoked recreationally for all these years and then all of a sudden turned into a, a, an old patient who's just taken his medicine? <laughs> well, I, again, you know, I, I'm, I'm a, a one-toker. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm a, a guy, 
Everything I do, I, I, I uh, make sure that I just take a, a tiny little bit for a lot of reasons, uh, mainly that the control to, uh, 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 you know, so that I can function, you know, so I'm not sitting in comat comatose. And then the other reason is that I, I, I can enjoy life more, you know. Like I'll take a little to go to dinner. I won't, you know, pig out. I'll, I'll just eat properly. I'll, I'll go to a movie. I'll take a little to go to a movie and stay awake and, 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 and enjoy everything. So it's it, it's all about it's all about uh, uh, knowing your body, you know, and what works best for you. You see, and that's the other thing. You know, when people say to me, "Oh, you cured your your cancer with uh, with marijuana," I said, uh, "Yeah, it's a little more complicated than that." You know, it's diet, doctors, straight medicine, uh, chemo, uh, radiation the whole nine yards you got to do it all but where marijuana like I said marijuana what marijuana does more than anything else it gives you an appetite for life yes. and that's what we need and that when your body realizes that it's going to uh, uh, you know get better because your mind says get better your mind activates your your uh, your, uh, uh, your healing. Yeah. Your immune system, yeah. Your immune system. And when it uh, activates your immune system, then your, your body responds. You're in charge. Yes. You're in charge. You tell your body what to do. Like we're in charge of our destiny. You know, whatever you want to be in life, you can be whatever you want to be. Because we're in charge. And the universe wants us to do that. That's why we're here. We're here to learn. And the universe is equipped and ready to give you whatever you need. That's why I, the more pot I give away, the more pot I end up with. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Tommy, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out Anytime. of your very busy life uh, to come and visit us here in Nevada and uh, on the show. And I hope that your body is telling you it wants to do this for another 20 years because we need guys like you, man. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. Now it's, 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 it's like dancing with the stars. It wasn't whether I was going to win or not. It was how long I was going to stay on the <laughs> no, show. It's just to be part of it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's what it, life is, too. It's not whether or not I'm going to live. It's how long I'm going to, I'm going to be here. Yeah. Because it's, it's my choice. Yeah. It's our choice. Sure. If you look at Janis Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, and, and the like, yeah. and they made their choice. They made their so. choice. All yeah. right. They, Tommy, I, I know you gotta go. I'm gonna let you go. Thank, okay, you, so. thank you so much. Okay. And welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. We are wrapping up our coverage here on election night, and boy, what an interesting night this has been. We have had marijuana issues on the ballot in nine different states, five of them for legalization, four of them for medical marijuana. On the medical marijuana side, we have all four of these states, it looks like, are passing their, um, uh, their medical marijuana laws. Uh, we have Arkansas approved with a 52.2 percent um, uh, of the vote. We have Florida approved at 71 percent. North Dakota amazingly approved 64 percent in favor. Now you know that the worm has turned when you've got almost two-thirds of North Dakotans voting for medical marijuana. That's just a, an outstanding development. We also have Montana who is uh, reinvigorating their medical marijuana program. They've got uh, 57 percent in favor as we're closing out this broadcast. So it's a, it's a great day for medical marijuana uh, in, in this country. We have gone now from 25 states to 29 states just overnight. It's, uh, it's really a big move forward. On the legalization side, this is a night like unlike any other in the in the history of the movement we have legalization having passed in Massachusetts in California it is leading in Maine it is leading here in Nevada so out of the five states that we had on the ballot it looks like only Arizona is going to not legalize uh, the possession and use of cannabis by adults uh, and they're voting 53 uh, percent against but uh, if the numbers uh, hold here in Nevada as they are they have been doing for the last several hours uh, we will win with roughly 53 percent of the vote versus 47 percent against so uh, as of January 1st 2017 marijuana will be legal in the state of Nevada for possession for up to one ounce and for patient for for adult users
youngsters, not even patients anymore, uh, to begin cultivating their own uh, recreational substances. And we will have dispensaries uh, turn into retail outlets and more retail outlets. So this is really a night unlike any other in the history of the, of the cannabis reform movement. Uh, we've made great strides here in the country. Uh, it looks like we're winning eight out of nine here, and just what a terrific time for the reform movement. So with that, we're going to sign off for this evening. Do come back and join us for our next show. We are going to continue to have more guests on as we look at the new unveiling recreational marijuana market in Nevada. Thanks so much for sticking with us. Have a good night.